<laughs> when you look at everyone who's out there right now, are there guys you look at and say, I wish I could manage them. I wish I had a chance to work with them. What guys would you actually want to manage besides the revolt out there right now? Of all the wrestlers you've seen lately. Well, and, and now of course this is going to piss somebody off if I don't mention them. Cause they're going to be, oh, I thought we were friends. Uh, but just off the top of my head, and once again, if things were, I'm not going to manage anybody now. I think I've made that plainly clear. Just can you imagine me just even two nights a week being in a fucking hotel now, but every week for months on end, being in a fucking hotel room and going to a different city. It's tough enough I'd to get be you a, into a suit now. You know, I, I haven't worn a fucking tie since when was it? Um, was it December? I was going to say November. I think what well, I did not do some in December. I'm not sure. Anyway. Nevertheless, uh, I, I did put a collared shirt on for that WWE shoot for the fucking Ruthless Aggression series. Anyway, um, so yes, point is, but if I was younger, if travel was easier, if flying wasn't miserable and the whole world hadn't changed, uh, I would I'd pick the easy answer and say MJF, but he doesn't need me. I just like to work with him, just fucking be up close at the ring and on promos just to watch him. But, you know, but yes, I, in a heartbeat, he's a great talent, but he wouldn't need me. I think the one of people that I've interacted with personally, rather than just seen on television, but people I've interacted with personally over the last year, Jacob Fatu. And I've said this before, it, it <laughs> I'm not advocating that they should have just raided Court Bauer's fucking talent closet, but the fact that Jacob Fatu is signed to MLW, but a billionaire is running AEW on national television, and they've got pockets and the fucking little kid stunt, right there is financial irregularity on, on somebody's part and fucking sabotage. Jacob Fatu is a beast. And nobody that I've seen in a long time gets over live like this guy. I was there the night they brought him to Chicago and the people hadn't seen him. And he went out and he did his shit and he got over. And it wasn't just because the moves he was doing. His shit looks good and convincing, but it's safe. He's got timing. He's got ring positioning. He's got facials. He looks like a badass because he is a badass. <clears throat> and and then when he he's like when I saw Snuka for the first time live in 1979, and it was just obvious that this guy was a fucking freak of nature. That a guy that size that looked like that shouldn't be that agile or that limber, or that coordinated to be able to to fucking move around like that, but still fucking be that big and hit that hard. He was just he was a beast. It's the same fucking thing. Um. They, of course, they've, they've put him over like a monster from the start, but that's the way you push a guy like this. And if it was a guy that couldn't carry the ball, it wouldn't have worked. And it, with, with it, it, that's the kind of guy you take into, whether it's the WWE, a big fucking promotion, and you're, 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 you've got big stars that you can match this guy with on pay-per-view to make money or down the network, to, or whether it's all elite wrestling. <clears throat> you you fucking introduce this guy with a manager and you fucking smash him over and you give him a backstory that people can believe where as Jerry Jarrett used to say you tell them what they know to be the truth in this instance in this instance in this instance so when you get to the working part there's still well everything else he said is true and we can see it so where you blur that line if I was going to give him a backstory, it would be that he is a member of the Samoan family, right? So you would introduce this guy. He doesn't say a word. He looks like that. He fucking destroys anybody that gets in his way. And I would be cutting the promo. I'd be saying, yes, he is a member of the exalted royal Samoan family. The family that's supposed to always have each other's back and take care of each other. But the reason why you haven't seen this guy on television... The reason why he hasn't taken his place with the rest of the Hall of Fame members and the rest of the champions, it's not because of any shortcoming on his part. It was because he was the black sheep. They said he made the wrong choices on who to hang around with, but you know what the actual fact was? He made those choices on who to hang around with because his family turned their backs on him. His family were jealous of his talent and the success he would have. So they didn't have his back. 
And those things he did, those things he did were to prove his loyalty to the people that had proved their loyalty to him, not the family, his new friends. He had to do those things to prove his loyalty. So while all the rest of the royal Samoan family of wrestling were putting that pig in the ground and having all those celebrations and talking about all the championship dynasties and reigns, Jacob Fatu was looking out a window with bars on it, not a part of the fucking celebration, not a part of the family itching to get outside where he could breathe air again. Because what happens when you cage up a beast? You make that beast turn and want to fight. Well, thanks to me, the beast got out. The beast has another chance. The beast can be released now in the world of wrestling where he should have been rightfully all along because of my connections. And now he's glad he's free again. And he's loyal, not like his family, not like the people that turned their back on him. He's loyal. He doesn't have any grudges against anybody here, but I do. And see, since Jacob Fatu is loyal, my grudges become his grudges. And that way you've set this guy up without telling everybody all the fucking details. He's a member of the Samoan family but he's been shunned by him. He's obviously been in jail for a social. And then you flesh out without the manager explaining it <laughs> by things that are fucking found out, etc. that yeah, he has spent some time in jail. He was a member of a gang. He did some things he had to, to prove his loyalty or elsewise he might've got fucking off. And now this fucking beast has one more chance to be released on wrestling Thanks to Jim Cornette and possibly Stephen P. New, his attorney, who got him fucking sprung. And anything that the manager says, the beast will perform. And then you put your baby faces one by one, try to slay this fucking dragon, and he goes through every single one of them until he gets to the guy that you have chosen to be your ultimate fucking face. And that's the one. He may... You may have chinks in the beast's armor from time to time. You can find out maybe he has one weakness if it's the right guy that fucking does something. But you smash him over, everybody on the roster, until he gets to the guy. And then the guy shows vulnerability. And then you do an angle. And the guy gets hurt. And the guy comes back to get even. And the guy does get even and slays the dragon. Depending on the size of the company, you've got six months to a year and a half of fucking business with this fucking guy that can get over. Or. <laughs> That's pretty good. You have a guy with his hands in his pockets <laughs> and he fucking jumps around. And then to, to be honest, also, if you want it, now's the time, Jacob Fatu, now's the time for Brock Lesnar to, to, to do a quick job. That would have woke some people up. Not in an empty building. Can you imagine Jacob Fatu coming out? Because once again, this is one of those deals. Could Brock out wrestle Jacob Fatu and tie him up into fucking knots? Yes, he certainly could. If Jacob Fatu was allowed to fucking eat eyeballs and fucking rip out fucking testicles, Jacob Fatu could hang right in there with fucking Brock Lesnar. If Brock Lesnar did a quick job in front of a stadium full of people for Jacob Fatu's fucking springboard moonsault after he'd done all of his monster shit, you'd make a fucking star. If, if Goldberg did a quick job for fucking Jacob Fatu's fucking springboard moonsault and they carried him out selling his fucking ribs, you'd make a new star. You know, he is one of those guys that you look at the AEW roster and you're like, how is this guy not there? You know, you're supposed to have the best of what's not in WWE. How is he not there? Well, apparently he didn't go to school with the Young Bucks because he's from California, too. I was going to say he's probably part of the wrong clique in California. That's really what it comes down to, who gets into AEW and who doesn't. And, and but but anyway, I'm, I've still, I've got a few other ideas. Oh. Uh, for different people. Jacob Fatu would be one if you wanted to go the other way. You don't want a monster. You don't want a beast. You want a guy that can do some of his own talking, a completely different flavor. You want a guy that can be a major star on his own, but you want to give him a 
a manager to help him get to that point, and then later on he can blossom? Alexander Hammerstone. Now he's a talent. I agree with you. Not only that, but he's coachable. You tell him to tweak something in his interviews, and he instantly does it. And then he does it with from then on without you telling him. If you see something in his match and you say, why did you do that? Or could you do this instead? Or what the fuck? He sees it and he corrects it. He's got all the tools. He's got the size. He's got the physique. He's got the look. He looks like a star. He can talk. He can talk on his own. He doesn't need a manager. But Bobby Heenan managed Kurt Henning. Sometimes you can still have a great fucking pairing. And you him him with him, the backstory is completely different. With him, the backstory, instead of being a fucking savage, a fucking former prisoner, a goddamn guy that was in gangs, he's wealthy. He's had the best training. He's had the best advantages. He's always been the fucking, he's the, the high school and college football team fucking quarterback. He got all the pussy. He's so much better than everybody else in every way that he's condescending and looks down on everybody. That's the kind of guy that he can be a bully on offense, and then you can find out when he gets on defense with a top guy, he's got a chicken shit side. He's seldom, so seldom in his life been pressed that when he is, he can't fucking handle it and he cracks up. But you promote him with not not just the million-dollar man gimmick. It's not about the wealth, but just about the advantages. And he's more like, well, you know, a gimmick that I always loved and that I wish could have something could have been done with in wrestling was Alexander Carolyn, the experiment. Carolyn was the fucking Russian Soviet fucking athlete that dominated amateur wrestling for however many years he went undefeated, blah, blah, blah. Because you know he was an experiment. They literally kind of gave the impression they had built this motherfucker in a lab. He was on probably the best cutting edge fucking growth hormone and everything else. But the experiment, that's what Matt Morgan, I used him in the same vein. He's the one that actually came up with the word blueprint. Um, but it fit because it was, it, my thought with him was he was the perfect athlete. He had no flaws. He had had a, a 4.0 grade average in fucking school, but he was seven feet tall, but he could fucking leapfrog, but he could dunk a basketball, but he was a bodybuilder. But it, and you do the training videos with a guy like that if you have a budget like they did in what rocky four where the guy's fucking training in the goddamn lab and he's blowing the fucking charts off all the machines whether it be the experiment or the blueprint or the you know the whatever the chris masters was the masterpiece that's that flavor of guy and then you let his natural personality carry that fucking story and it's it's believable and relatable He's another single guy that I think that he could actually benefit from a manager, probably just somebody at ringside with a little more experience to fucking on the job training. And honestly, I've worked with them personally just once, but we've talked about them sometimes. They were what they were the war machine, but they're the Viking warriors or Raiders or who the, what the fuck is their name? And now you got me confused. Viking Raiders. I think the Viking Raiders. Okay. Just, Take all their clothes off, just strip them completely naked and change the name and the clothing and the gimmick and the whole nine yards. And, but those two guys, because of the human beings that they look like and the shit they can do could be presented as not only an incredible heel team, but a heel team that, that people would start calling to turn face in an unlike a, a Jacob Fatu, you never want him to have a redeeming quality. You want him to be an evil, vicious hitman motherfucker to the core until the manager, he finally finds out the manager has fucked him and stabbed him in the back and was disloyal to him. And that's why he turns. And then he does all the same shit that he was doing to the fucking baby faces to the fucking heels, but he never still acknowledges the people. But with the Viking, whoever the fuck, Find something. I don't know what the fuck. I haven't given a bunch of thought of this because I'm not getting paid for it. But I like those guys as talents. If you could find a look for them that that meant something that was legitimate and realistic and credible. The flavor of that team is, I think, back to Don Fargo and his partners in the Hells Angels slash Chain Gang, 
whether it was the first was uh um oh god frank dillinger he's the one guy's leg shot off and then he got a few more dillingers one of them was fucking ron dupree one of them was chris colt but they dressed as fucking dirty bikers. They rode motorcycles up to the back of the arena, walked in, went to the ring in the same shit they were wearing, had their fucking match, left, got on their bic bicycles, motorcycles, and rode off. Don Fargo lived his gimmicks. Whether these guys are two fucking rednecks from the Ozarks somewhere or fucking mountaineers from West Virginia or fucking beer drinkers from fucking Milwaukee or some goddamn gang people from fucking South Florida or whatever, they they dress fucking badass, they live the gimmick 24-7, they come in the buildings, they do that shit. The promos, remember the chain gang promos, where Fargo would be talking louder, but the other guy would be, they'd be having two conversations at the same time, and it was just chaos. You don't know what the fuck's the matter with these guys. And they're fucking drunk, and they're high, and they're whatever the fuck else they are. And with a manager to direct them and make them heels, you get a heel run out of them, but they could still do a little more entertaining shit than a Jacob Fatu would do because they're not carrying the whole territory. They can make the kind of f goofy faces, <clears throat> and they can be the bruiser and crusher because pretty soon they're badass, and they do all those cool moves, and they hit hard, and they're ass kickers. And at some point or another, the people are going to kind of start liking them. And then you fucking create tension with the manager or whatever the fuck. And then they become gimmick baby faces and you get another run at it. It's just those guys in all their matches, they deliver great shit. They need somebody with a vision of who they ought to be and how they ought to be pushed and how to best use their incredible big man maneuvers and combine that with a fucking just a decent look and and not so much ha ha and putting them in there with teams half their size and half their potential. So that's another just off the top of my head from people I've seen over the last year that I've interacted with. You know, who I think you'd be good with Jeff Cobb. Well, as my, I've heard so much good stuff about him and he's another monster and he's a shooter. He's legitimate and he's. Built great, and he, you could tell he's a, a, a guy that's a, a power guy. And they just, they brought him in and, and even kind of built him up at the start. Like, oh my God, he's such this, this horrifying, scary, intimidating personality. And then he, you know, went 20 minutes, got beat, was another one of the boys. You know, if if he went into another company with a different slightly different look or just these people have short memories and they could bring him back and do it right that'd you know that'd be great but <clears throat> I, I couldn't understand why that was the first time i'd seen him i'd heard a lot about him and how badass he was but they didn't present him that way and part of that may be his fault i'm not saying any of the creative was his but sometimes you have to step up and take your opportunity to get over as a, as a fucking badass on national TV. I'm not saying go into business for yourself and win the match, but I would have been more aggressive, but th that was a definitely a failure on the part of the fucking brain trust over there. Yeah, here he is. There he went. You lose the first fucking time when you come in, it's supposed to be a badass and a hit man. I don't get it. <laughs> 